Welcome, everyone, to the Full Dash Closure audiobook and podcast, a special edition here on Saturday Night uh, Live. And glad you're tuning in. There's been a lot going on in the last couple days, and I thought it would be good to bring this to light, give you a heads up about how quickly scams can unravel and i think you know by now that uh i consider doordash to be uh, like the other gamblified gamified gig apps a uh, fraud based upon corporate ai and well We've got more proof than ever. I would say the cards are starting to fall. So let's kind of let's kind of take a step back a little bit about maybe the last year of developments and how we got to this point. Um, as the pandemic took hold, businesses like uh, DoorDash and Grubhub and Uber Eats and the ride sharing businesses like Uber and Lyft gained a prominence and a business opportunity that they never would have had otherwise. And because, because there was so much disarray and there was a large pool of people that uh, wanted to work yet couldn't work in traditional jobs, there were a large group of people who wanted certain things and couldn't get out as they normally do because of the pandemic. So, so the what's called the gig economy rose during this time into prominence for a couple different reasons. One, to meet the needs of the pandemic, which uh, involved much more outside assistance for food or restaurants or products from merchants than had been required previously. Because previously, in the history of man, 99% of retailers and 85% of uh, restaurants in the United States did not have any delivery. So delivery has never been and is not now a key element of the restaurant business. And one of the things that I think both the gig economy uh, laborers or what, what are called the gig economy laborers, I, I've turned them app slaves because there's no independence whatsoever, whatsoever and they are in fact uh, slaves of the application, which is directing their every move in our physical world through a simulation in a computer IA, AI system. So that's that's scary stuff. So so first of all, one of the parts of this what they what DoorDash's Tony Hsu calls a three sided marketplace. Um, that's probably our first clue as I sketched that out on paper that that DoorDash is a scam because uh, a three sided marketplace only exists in a simulation. Right. The, the three sided mar sided marketplace that DoorDash set up is a three sided marketplace that is siloed. So it's so it's truly a triangle. There's no there's nothing in the middle. There's three sides. And three sides are just kind of dotted line connected to each other, but they don't really have any interaction. And DoorDash is just orchestrating that chaos, right? So you've got the, the, the restaurants in their restaurant uh, point of purchase system. So, so DoorDash is providing financing and even infrastructure and point of sale systems to these merchants in order to, in order to get them involved in this, in this rigged market simulation that they're in. And as the restaurants use that, they're paying a huge fee to do that. Your typical restaurant plans uh, for re for DoorDash are 15%, 25%, and 30% on the restaurant side commission. And national retailers or national uh, restaurateurs, I should say, uh, get a better deal, of course. So so the competition is is slanted to put your local businesses out of business from the beginning because... Uh, McDonald's is paying 11.9 or 12.5%, or 12 somewhere in that range, based upon their national contractual uh, deal. And the other major uh, restaurateurs 
are, are doing the same thing. Chipotle is getting some kind of preferred rate. Red Robin's getting some kind of preferred rate and on down the line. Now, your local restaurant is not getting a preferred rate. They're paying this full advertising rate, kind of akin to the old Yellow Pages scam that put so many small businesses out of business in the days uh, of yore. Uh, it was always said, maybe some of you remember that, you know, you, you, you had to be in the Yellow Pages and, and you had to be up near the front. That was the thing. And so everybody was competing to get near the front of the Yellow Pages because even though the yellow pages was selling you the yellow pages, they were telling you that only the first pages of every category were the valuable ones. Isn't that, isn't that cool? The way they kind of pumped up their own market to convince you. And uh, I had some clients that owed tens of thousands of dollars uh, or even hundreds of thousands of dollars to uh, companies that, that did the yellow pages. And, and those companies were involved in a lot of lawsuits because they did essentially predatory lending they would they would finance the advertising uh, for these small businesses in the yellow pages and then the the uh, business would not uptick enough to cover that cover that cost of advertising in the expensive yellow pages and what would happen the business would financially fail that's exactly what's happening here um, this is a, a well-run path that's exactly what's happening here with with doordash uh, and the gig economy as well. So how is that working for a restaurant? Well, restaurants can't afford to pay 15 to 25 to 30% of their uh, gross sale to uh, a company that's doing nothing but but having somebody uh, deliver the food. It's, it's not, they don't benefit from it. So every meal that they sell through DoorDash, most restaurateurs would tell you is probably a, a meal that they sell at no profit or even a loss. So why would they do that? Why would they do that? Well, they were convinced during a time of, of unprecedented during our lifetime emergency that you had to. And they signed these contracts that, that made no sense uh, over the long term, but seemed to make sense in the short term. And now this, this monster came to being. And a lot of them have gone out of business once their PPP money and obligations dried up, they shut the doors. Uh, that's been, there's been a huge spate of closed restaurants lately. And make no mistake about it, part of that is the gig economy, right? Um, when people are patronizing their local restaurants through the gig economy, they're putting their local restaurants out of business. Uh, I've had a, a general manager of a big pizza place that that was in uh, one of my areas for uh, a long time told me that the only thing that that uh, the gig economy and DoorDash does for them is it keeps their volume up so they they keep people uh, working but they make no money off it so um, it's 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 really a waste of time but it's they kind of see it as a necessary evil Necessary evils are interesting things, aren't they? Or, you know, kind of like lesser evils. If it's evil, why do you want it as either, you know, lesser or more or necessary? So, and and that's kind of the point here is that the gig economy is is about as evil as any business scheme that's ever been created in the history of humanity. And, and that's not an understatement. So from the restaurant perspective, if you're a local restaurateur or a local merchant, you're now roped into some kind of, of expectation with certain types of customers that delivery is available and you can get coerced into, into doing that. Now, a lot of, a lot of retailers or restaurateurs, their volume of gig economy business is not as high as it used to be or is going down or is not terribly significant. So maybe some of them aren't really worried anymore if they're doing if they're only selling a couple meals a day, uh, as one of the restaurateurs that that I consulted with did. Eh, they're not really that worried about it if if a couple meals go out without uh, profitability and you know is is it advertising? I don't know, uh, but you know it's also competition because every restaurant that is on uh, DoorDash or in the market they have their own websites as well where uh, local customers can buy directly on the website from the restaurant the restaurant gets 100% of the money and they have to 
drive by and pick it up themselves. That costs the customer much, much less because on the customer side, one of these other sides of this three-sided marketplace that, that DoorDash has uh, invented into the world of, of, a, of a gamified, gamified, rigged uh, gig app game is, is the consumer food side. And so the consumer food application has a very specific view of the world, and that's the view of the world that DoorDash gives each of us individually. The DoorDash application has that customer isolated in a DoorDash world where it's preventing, presenting restaurants, uh, some of whom physically exist and some of whom only exist in a branding capacity in the DoorDash app uh, as another theoretical uh, meal option for customers to choose from. And of course, what that's doing is it's polluting the marketplace. So if there's th two real hamburger restaurants and three fake DoorDash, uh, you know, scammer restaurants, then when a consumer goes on there to look, now you've got maybe a two out of five chance they're going to buy the hamburger from you instead of a two out of two chance they're going to buy a hamburger from you. And so, so your chances of as an individual retailer of getting an order from DoorDash actually go down when you go on their app, because you're going to get a computer AI served up selection of burger options, which are not burger restaurants in the real world. So see how this is so very confusing about what this actually is that we're dealing with. Are we dealing with real restaurants? Are we dealing with real brands? Are we dealing with, with a real marketplace? Well, okay, so the food customers are, are getting dynamic pricing. I may buy my meal and get it delivered at a different rate than my next door neighbor because DoorDash's computer AI is maximizing and exploiting consumers just like it does uh, app slaves or what DoorDash calls dashers. So that's second side of the marketplace. Let's look at this third side of the marketplace. And the third side of the marketplace, I think, is the most interesting because it's the fuel that makes this go. Hi, Kvass Residue. It's great to see you in here. Uh, I appreciate you showing up. We're talking about now the 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 third side of the three sided uh, simulated marketplace of DoorDash, and, and that third side being the Dashers. So, what are Dashers? Well, Dashers are not uh, Dashers are not employees. Dashers are not any part of the gig economy companies in any way, shape, or form. And that is by very uh, intensively planned purpose. So the gig economy was created to destroy employment, to destroy all of the workers' rights and safety and uh, equity issues that had been fought for since the Industrial Revolution and the unions. And, and what DoorDash has done by creating the gig economy along with these other uh, members of, the, of what I call the corporate gig economy cabal is they, they've created a new paradigm that exists without laws. There are no laws that have ever been created as, as case law for AI. Right. So so this is now in lower courts. This is in the states. This is all over the place because people are figuring out this is a god awful scam. This is the worst scam ever run on humanity. And it's being done by a very few very evil companies uh, like DoorDash, Uber, Lyft. And then they have some other competitors in in uh, individual nations around the world. DoorDash in particular is in 27 nations by acquiring Volt app out of Finland during the pandemic in 2020. 
DoorDash uh, jumped from four nations to 27. So in 27 nations, DoorDash is now attempting to perform what I call app colonization. So they're going to have, through the magic of, of computer, uh, of corporate AI, workers all over the world slaving for them while they take a percentage of the gross revenue that's produced by all of that economic activity. That's insane. That is one hell of a scam. I mean, the, and, and the scope of it, because it's always off the gross activity is amazing. So let's take, let's take an example. So if you bought uh, $1 of food on DoorDash, food brand food on DoorDash, that one dollar of food by the time it's delivered to you is probably going to be you know a dollar and and 30 cents okay so you're you're maybe paying 30 percent more than the prices that that you would have paid if you bought that food directly now out of that uh one dollar doordash is going to take out let's say 20, 25%, they're going to take out 25% from the restaurant. So the restaurant, instead of making ten uh, $1 of gross revenue, is now making 75 cents of gross revenue. DoorDash is taking that 25 cents. Now the consumer, instead of paying a dollar, is now paying a dollar 30. Now a little bit of that's going to go to the dasher because because some of that is a tip and some of that is is in there as what they call a base pay, which is an amount that, that goes out for every order to a, a uh, dasher on their their app. So so DoorDash is now going to uh, take another, let's say, twenty cents out of that consumer. So if they're taking twenty five cents out of that consumer or, or out of that restaurant, twenty cents out of the uh, consumer, you can see that out of a dollar thirty transaction, DoorDash is taking you know forty to forty three cents. So they're taking a major part. And so, and from a, from a uh, restaurant's perspective, out of a dollar transaction, DoorDash is taking a revenue of a gross revenue of somewhere around 40, 42 cents. So, th so that's an amazing amount of money, an unjustifiable amount of money, an untenable amount of money. Um, it's amazing that anybody ever bought into this, but because this is new technology to humanity, People just didn't know what they were signing up for. And that's that's the commonality of the gig economy is or, or what, what they call the gig economy is that it's deceptive. So so back to this this consumer or I'm sorry, the, the Dasher example here. So this Dasher now plays no role in this other than picking up from point A, which is a restaurant and delivering to point B. Other than that. DoorDash doesn't want to know they exist. They subtracted all of the activities of the tasks of, of dashers who are called independent contractors very falsely. It's a, it's a misuse of the definition of an independent contractor. They're not independent. So all of those dashers that are called independent contractors are, uh, are, are disavowed, unknown, and unlisted in anywhere in the DoorDash business. They're a technology company that wants to provide infrastructure for local marketplaces. In other words, they want to put uh, a massive parasitic infrastructure tax on all of the economy across the planet. And they're getting away with it uh, to, to a large extent. So DoorDash is based on addiction. It's based on addiction for the app slaves that are using gamblified gig apps that don't have other options and are desperate. It's used to deceive consumers to present them with, with choices and prices that are uh, not fair. You know, if it's, it's, it, it's algorithmic discrimination. So just because AI is discriminating between me and some, and a uh, woman who lives next door, doesn't make it any less unacceptable than if a human being was discriminating between me and a woman who lives next door. So you see how it, how AI takes those intentions of the creators, who in this case are all corporations, they're all creating these corporate AI systems with one purpose, and that is to exploit 
labor, to hide the sources and uses of labor, which I call labor laundering, and then to, to basically start a precedent around the world that controlling humans by computer AI in simulations on smartphones is an okay thing to do. One of the biggest problems with this, and that kind of brings us to the to the point of of tonight's uh, special edition, is that the fooled uh, people in this in this scenario most impacted are the people called dashers because they're attempting to use this activity as income when in fact it's so deceptive that many of them will never make any money might even lose money on the activity and all of that risk of a corporation all of the risk of time and inflation and car accidents and insurance and expenses and gas all of those things and the management of a vehicle to drive around all of those things have been transferred from the back of corporations onto the back back of impoverished uh app slaves so this is the most despicable transfer of risk and loss to impoverished workers that, that's ever been created there's never been an opportunity to fleece humanity like was created with corporate AI. And the thing is, people know it. So what's happening is that legislators are attempting to piecemeal, maybe get a little bit of, of a handle on the rate of pay or some kind of fair work standards for the gig economy, but they're all losing because with black box AI, there, there's nothing, this is nailing jello to a wall. There's there's nothing to to get a grip on. This is this is a game. This is a moving target. This is this is something that it has a has a dual impossibility scenario. It cannot be understood. And even if it was understood, it could not be explained to anyone. So that is the output that people are trusting uh, across this world to direct labor. Now it doesn't just direct labor though. It gaslights labor, it exploits labor, it terminates labor without cause. Computer AI now hires and fires. And you know, with computer AI, there's no human responsible. So when uh, gig app labor gets cut off from their from their application for any or no reason, they have no recourse. So, and, and some legislators have been trying to build systems for recourse, but the, the dirty little secret that nobody will tell you is that there's no way for, for these gig economy companies to handle the volume of recourse that would actually, that's actually happening with human beings because nobody's actually, no human beings actually serve these dashers. They're pushed off to a third party independent contractor, mostly with, with computer AI response, uh, customer service and unempowered uh, customer service, both for the consumer and for the dasher. So it's just chaos. It's just absolute chaos, which again is intentional because that chaos obfuscates all of the reality of this, of this scenario in which a non-legitimate business is taking place. The, the key to understanding the gig economy is that it's the economy stupid there is no gig economy that's that's the first lie the gig economy is the regular economy every uh ride share is a substitution for a cab or walking or a bike or a bus it's a direct substitution transportation human transportation has been around in many forms for a long time one form uh, just because it's in the gig economy is not an innovation versus another. Same thing with package delivery. Uh, DoorDash, because they're predatory and because, because they're taking a huge percentage from all of this gross economic activity, wants everything to run through them. And so they're claiming credit for the sun rising in the morning and, and, and the moon rising at night. It's all about DoorDash because 
it's all under their purview, right? That all of this is wrapped up in their gross revenue. But what's wrapped up in their gross revenue is everyone else being exploited. So, so there is no gig economy. There's only the economy. Any meal that is ordered from a restaurant through DoorDash would have been ordered at the restaurant for eat in or a different restaurant or eaten at home. Any meal eaten is a substitute for another meal eaten. One of the things that 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 is truly ignored all around the gig economy is is worker safety. Wow. Uh, I would be scared to drive an Uber or Lyft in Portland. Uh, the number of murders of cab drivers, uh, of people getting attacked, uh, people Uber and Lyft uh, drivers around the nation and even around the world have been attacked and killed. Taking people in your car is a whole nother level than, than uh, last mile delivery where you're picking up uh, some kind of a retail item or some kind of a, a restaurant meal and, and delivering it to someone's home whole different animal nevertheless last mile delivery is one of the most uh, dangerous jobs in america one of the top 10 most dangerous jobs amazon delivery drivers in 2022 were injured at a rate of 20 percent on the job that's 20 one out of every five amazon drivers in 2022 was injured on the job so if you apply that to however many millions of gig app laborers are around the US, you can imagine there are untold amounts of workplace injuries. There are untold amounts of accidents from distracted driving and from uh, from just being involved in an activity that is that is roaming around the streets multiple hours a day going in and out of parking lots, turning, parking, getting out, getting back in. This is a horribly dangerous activity. And because of that, you know, it's not just a risk of injury or death. Because of that risk, the chances of you and your assets coming out of this ahead are not good. I earned money over doing 5,521 dashes, but I also during that time did about $8,000 of damage to my automobile uh, because using your, your automobile as a delivery vehicle is going to be using your automobile as a commercial vehicle and you're going to kind of beat the shit out of it. That's, that's what happens. And I was a person who never had any minor dents or fender benders or anything like that. I was a really careful driver, but I'm telling you, once, once you're out delivering you know, 20, 25 uh, deliveries a day with with multiple stops and retailers and consumers and driveways and everything else. Uh, I was playing bumper cars. It was it was ridiculous. Uh, it's so difficult to do that amount of activity in such a dangerous job and never have anything go wrong. Why do you think the gig economy wanted to give this special opportunity to laborers to take all their independence and, and, and all the risk along with it? Well, because it's the, it's the greatest thing ever to happen to a corporation to get rid of the biggest problem ever, which is the people. Uh, there will never be any unions. There's never any way to organize. They're transient labor. You, can, you don't even know which company they're working for. A lot of these folks multi-app and uh and use two or three four different apps in a day so if someone was to get injured or killed or injure or kill somebody else which company were they working for at the time who who's who's responsible nobody's responsible when nobody's responsible that's called a free rider because society sucks it up society is responsible when when people are underpaid and enslaved society picks up the burden socially politically uh economically and this is this is a real problem what we have is a different cast of human being being established around the world with this different different labor class and it is a god awful trap this is like being a garbage picker to get trapped in in gig labor because it's a race to the bottom there is no value uh it's where humans are ubiquitous have no value 
And all the gig economy wants is an endless supply because as long as there's an endless supply, they can do anything they want with their market simulation. The only way to break their market simulation is if they lose their supply because they control the supply and demand for drashers on the road at all times. That's key to controlling the market in every way, that market simulation. So nothing is independent. I've used the, the, the analogy before. It's like playing Mario Kart. You may be the Mario Kart world champion. You may, be, uh, you may get rewards. You can talk to people around, about it. You play the game and you're a winner. It doesn't mean you're doing it in real life. Right. That's just that's a simulation. You're not really a race car driver. And even, even though you're sitting in your living room and in real life, there's a physical you doing this stuff. That's like DoorDash. DoorDash, you're in a game world. Everything that happens to you is part of the game world. Even if it seems real, even if you're talking trash or or, you know, looking at your your kid who's who's playing you from the other side of the room. Well, that's a real experience it's it's still a simulated it's still a simulation of a racing game and so so this kind of sums up where we are today which is that the people doing this work the labor have been convinced that this is real they've been fooled by by this corporate ai and and by this deception which is very intentional but the news is that is breaking. I'm going to share something with you here that's going to going to probably blow your mind a little bit, um, because this this blew my mind last night when I saw it. So I've had some extensive discussions or or commentary with different gig app content creators and i've i've never been a gig app content creator and i don't intend to be but i've i've been somewhat critical in my comments to them over time because because they seem to be they seemed to be unable to learn about the scam that they're involved in and unable to see what's before their very eyes now there's it's very reasonable one could assume that uh people can be uncritical of what's before their very eyes, especially if there's a, a monetary incentive involved that encourages them to do so. So somebody that's doing gig tubing uh, may get revenue or, you know, the big, the, the more uh, longstanding and, and larger channels do make money off this. And so making money off YouTube and GigTube and and other social media and even sponsorships becomes a bigger income opportunity than, of course, the gig economy in the first place. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong with that. It's just another broadcasting opportunity or another opportunity to talk to people, just like just like I'm doing right now with you. The problem comes in when it's dishonest. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play something for you here, and. Uh, We'll see what happens. All right, so when I told you that, I specifically asked you not to say nothing. Why are you going around saying I'm deceiving people and this and that? Like, who do you know who I told that to? I only told you that. I don't go around and fill you in who I tell and who I don't tell. You know what I mean? Like, what makes you think that, like, the shit that you're saying is fucking true? Like, that's fucked up, bro. What what am I saying that's not true, Flex? Like, who do you know who I tell and I don't tell? I what know. Makes... Oh, so, but, 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 but what I'm trying to explain to you is that I'm not getting into the whole thing and I don't. So, like I said, I don't know what to tell you, Flex. You feel a certain way and you have a certain way of looking at it. I apologize that you feel offended or hurt. The fucked up thing is, the fucked up thing is... Okay, so what are they talking about? Well, there's a dirty little secret that came out, and that's that the GigTube creators that have been out telling people about how much money they've been making and the opportunities of doing the DoorDash programs that they've been doing called, called Top Dasher, 
have been uh, sharing a back door to DoorDash through the Android app that allowed them to rig the Top Dasher system. And instead of being gaslighted and scammed by Top Dasher to accept money losing uh, app slavery orders, they can skip that part and just get, quote, Top Dasher status by cheating. Well, that's kind of funny. It's funny for a number of reasons. Number one, cheating and scamming and theft is part of the entire world of the gig app, gig economy. It was created for deception. So consumers use it to deceive restaurants and DoorDash and get food for free because there's many ways with DoorDash's lackluster support and lack of control and chaos to get free food. And so they do that all the time. They're constantly scamming DoorDash. But but when, hi, Jake from State Farm. So, so the problem is, guess what happens when they scam DoorDash? Who do you think really pays? Well, who's holding all of the risk between a restaurant, DoorDash, uh, a consumer, and the Dasher. One of those four parties is holding all the risk, and it's the Dasher. It's the one, the most impoverished, with the most work, and the least money, and the least status. They're holding all the risk. So when something, when something uh, goes wrong, or if somebody commits fraud, the assumption by the computer AI system is, well, get rid of that Dasher. Penalize the dasher, put a contract violation on the dasher. So it's it's very typical punitive system that you see with all types of, of low wage labor. So they, they, they put a punitive system in. And again, because there are no rules, there is no case law, there is no work protections. They can do anything. They can do anything. The only rule in the gig economy is there are no rules. That should terrify you. Why would you play with the corporate rule world with no rules? Uh, Enron had no rules. FTX had no rules. Bernie Madoff had no rules. Every scam in history has had no rules. And every scam in history was seen as legitimate before it fell apart. Well, here's why this one's going to fall apart. Because this scam of what, uh, what these folks were doing is fraud, right? And it's not just fraud to, to DoorDash. That would, be, uh, that would be interesting. But worse yet, it's fraud upon viewers who are being presented with programs from DoorDash as opportunities when in fact they're not. That's what I have uh, been critical of, of many, many of these content creators because they are deceptively and selectively providing information and, provide, and providing it and telling people there's opportunity here. Now, when you tell desperate people there's opportunity and they take it and they lose, that's on you. When you sell yourself as, as Mr. Positivity, as, as somebody, you know, the can-do attitude, and you're cheating the system to get your status and telling everybody else on your ride-alongs what your status is, wow, that's uh, it's really disgusting on, on so many levels. So let's listen to a little bit more of this. I'm going to pull this up on the computer this time because... I want you to I want you to hear how nefarious this is. And and these guys know they're doing wrong, right? So there's there's multiple different people involved in this scam. So let's let's pull this up here. I'm gonna share a screen. Share the screen. What's this guy called? Connection. So this is from a channel called Cherry. I said, you know, I went out of the way and I, I told you something so you could so you could benefit off of it. And not in the, and not in the way that you're doing it right now, because you're not benefiting off of it. You're basically ruining it for everybody. Because now you just got to wait for a patch for them to fucking do it. OK, so so you see what they're saying is they're saying 
you're ruining this backdoor scam for everybody because they consider this a glitch for the back door so that DoorDash can do this. Now, that is certainly an explanation for it. What's a more likely explanation? The more likely explanation and the explanation that I would assume to be true because DoorDash does not sleep on the job. And I don't believe that glitches go into production. DoorDash made this backdoor for its gig content creators. It gave it to however it was was developed. It was leaked out to different content creators like uh, Mr. Flex, who you see right here. Uh, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know who that guy is. Don't care. Uh, it was leaked out to Pedro DoorDash Santiago. Um, uh, I'm told that Sin City Deliveries, um, that's out of Las Vegas, had a, has a Discord channel where it was charging people money for this information. Uh, so this is really nefarious stuff, but that doesn't mean it's not in DoorDash's interest. It's in DoorDash's interest to have gig tubers misrepresent the opportunities to the public so that DoorDash can get more rubes to lose money. They're happy if Mr. Flex says he makes money. They're happy if Pedro says he makes money. They're happy if, if Sin City Delivery says they make money and, and sells opportunity to other people. They're fine with all of that. Why wouldn't they be? They're making more money. They're making more money, more money, more money. But somebody's losing. And that somebody is always, always the labor. Let's listen to more of this disgusting conversation. Okay, Flex, but here's, and this is where we can't have this conversation. I understand you think that you told me, but I knew way before. And I'm not going to tell you, oh, this person can tell you and that person can tell you because that starts off. So what they're arguing is who knew. So so when something circular like this gets out, now it's like, well, who spilled the beans? Well, if I heard it from you and you spilled the beans, then you then they'll know it came from you. Well, so a whole bunch of different people knew this and nobody knows quite who knew it first. But again, is this a glitch or does this serve the purposes of DoorDash? You have to assume that a DoorDash who runs a a computer AI system that can make over 2 million predictions a second about what you're going to do next doesn't have backdoor glitches for Mr. Flex, Pedro, and Sin City Deliveries and others like them that are unknown to the company that only work on Android phones. This is, this is not uh, a likely scenario. The likely scenario is DoorDash made this backdoor specifically for this purpose so that their lies about the amount of money and the amount of opportunity they provide will be will be perpetuated by app slaves themselves and that's what i find so absolutely disgusting is that these folks i thought that they were honestly stupid and they're dishonestly stupid and that that um i guess i knew that i guess i knew that because nobody can be that dense but to find out um, that this was their little shared secret and, and listen to them talking on this, uh, this phone conversation. So this person, uh, always cherry pick is a, uh, is a gig tuber that's been around for a while and, and is the person that made this, uh, this video. I'm told that, that cherry made another video the day before that was deleted in which they linked leaked more details about this, including, I think, kind of the methodology of exactly how it's done. Um, not, you know, not that that that, that particularly matters. We'll, we'll get into that, too. But let's let's listen. It's a whole clusterfuck. I knew it. I've known it, you know, and people will say I'm, that I'm like, wrong. So but the I'm reason not, why I'm that everybody go ahead. Yeah. I apologize. I'm not going to say anything like further in the future, bro. This helping him is not gonna fucking help no more to nobody, bro. Because I don't trust nobody anymore. Just because of shit like this, bro. Like, like, like. So, so when, when you know, as parents, we tell our kids that that lying has consequences and and dishonesty has consequences. This is this is what we're talking about. You know, at some point the jig is up and it's not as fun anymore. Like Bobby said, I told you something private. Now you're telling me you already knew. Like, bro, come on. 
uh, anyone could say that. Oh, oh yeah, Flex. You know, you know what? Great, thanks. I already knew that. I appreciate you. This is why Flex that we can't go back and forth because I'm not gonna say that you were the first person to explain it to me, and you're not gonna accept that that's the truth. So we're kind of at a standstill. Robert, warn my friends and let them know, like, yo, help yourself. But and I specifically tell everybody, don't say nothing, don't bring it up, don't talk about it on the stream. I don't want to hear it. The first thing I told you, what do you, what, what did you do, Cherry? You went out fucking talking people. Oh, I know you're doing this. I know you're doing this. I got the proof, bro. Like I didn't even say nothing, bro. I just kept my mouth shut. Like Cherry's being fucking stupid. Right, like, come on, bro. Like, that okay, is well, not, not to, not to see. This is how we're gonna go back and forth, Lex. But the first person to mention it was was Pedro. He said, "If y'all knew about the real glitch, none of this would matter." Ha ha ha, bro. But that's that was that was way that was way after I fucking told you about it. That was way after, bro. I never mentioned it on publicly to anybody until after that. It doesn't matter. Like, like, come on. Like, the, the first thing I like, I told you, you you turn around and you start taunting people. Not necessarily me, but people you don't like. That's not cool, bro. Not cool, bro. Not cool, bro. So, uh, pretty interesting conversation, wouldn't you say? So, so this glitch, this is this is kind of how it works. You need an Android phone, and you basically log into the app, bring up the the multitasking window, and click the app so it brings up the ability to force close it, and then. Uh, force close it and shut the app down but you wait for a text to come in with an order and so once it does you wait until the dash is paused and open your app your ar your acceptance rate goes up as if you accepted the order in some cases it won't if you're replacing accepted order in your last hundred so you, there's some caveats then rinse and repeat so so you do this so what they're doing is they're rigging their their acceptance rate and lying to their viewers saying that they're accepting all these all these orders that it takes to be a, da a top dasher which is a money losing proposition you can't do it top dasher is a scam yet they're saying they're a top dasher because they're doing this and in, and inviting other people to do that so you know i mean absolutely blatant fraudulent activity uh the fact that they're hacking doordash either with doordash's uh permission and uh and collaboration or not uh is, is immaterial but again uh there is no possible way that doordash doesn't know this is going on doordash uh, gets every bit of data from every phone that's connected to its network and it knows this is going on and it also watches all of these gig tubers uh, with both social listening software, which which captures every word that's chatted or or mentioned about them on social media and YouTube and Facebook and newspapers and everything else and chat boards and and Reddit. Uh, so so they're constantly taking the temperature of the audience and then they're using these uh, criminal uh, stooges as as uh, salespeople for their app slavery scam so this is this is the final piece of the puzzle because these these uh these leaders of this community selling this lie have been propping up doordash and and making the unbelievable uh somehow believable with their convincing act and and flex admits he's i love this i love doing this stuff i love riding around doing this stuff let's let's listen to a little bit more well i kept my mouth shut i didn't say nothing okay well can i tell you that the glitch has been around since sin city's been charging 40 dollars for discord i know i know it's been around it's been around for like two fucking years well i've known about it for a year flex so so if we're Okay, so it's been around for two years. It's been around. Uh, Cherry's known about it for a year, and Sin City Delivery is allegedly uh, got a got a Discord channel that Rubes pay forty dollars for, so that they can get the methodology for this for this uh, backdoor into DoorDash Heaven. 
I, I still don't believe, I mean, when I've seen the numbers that Flex and these other guys produce, even with this cheat code, it's it's pathetic, right? This isn't enough money to survive doing this, but they're making enough off the rubes on YouTube selling this lie that it's making up the difference. So um, I hope that this video contributes to, to uh, screwing them all and putting them all out of their disgusting little lying business because they're collaborating with the most evil company on the face of the planet, which is DoorDash. So let's listen a little bit more and, and we'll be more convinced by this evil. We're all saying we knew about it and now we're admitting that we knew about it. It's like we're, it's like we're watching uh, the usual Whatever suspects. you did, you could have done that privately if you wanted to help people. Mr. Pink, Mr. Cherry, Mr. Red. Why do I have to be Mr. Black? Uh, whatever you did, I don't know what, what, what was your intent of doing. I have no fucking idea. But all I know is I, uh, when I told you, I specifically asked you not to say nothing to nobody and don't ever bring it up. And, like, mm -hmm. you know, well, that's later. Later. you learned that you learned that one of my favorite at, uh, parts of, of the Steinbeck novel, The Winter of Our Discontent, which is one of my favorite books of all time is when he talks about uh, how to effectively do crime, uh, you don't tell anybody ever. You don't tell your wife, you don't tell your best friend, you don't tell yourself. You never, ever, 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 ever tell anybody. And obviously these guys are not very good criminals because they tell too many people. I understand that's what you wanted. I don't recall you saying it, but I'm not stupid. I understand I'm not supposed to run around and tell it. So that's how my compromise is going to be. I don't ever recall you. If I remember, you showed the 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 text message where it said you sent me an acceptance screen and I didn't say anything. You said, I'll fill you in later. I didn't say, hey, I want that because I already knew it. But yes, it was manipulating you to act like you and Light told me. It was manipulating you because I wanted to find out the source and the root so I could get back to page. Oh, this is like spy versus spy. This is really great. This is, this is, there's no honor among thieves. There's no honor among thieves. There's, there, there's actually, I mean, Cherry Pick is actually coming off pretty good in this. I think he's the stand up guy that's, that's calling bullshit on this. But there, there's no honor among thieves, man. I told you. Pedro, but I already knew Pedro knew from from Sin City because Whatever. Sin City told Pedro months ago. Whatever you didn't know how it was done, did you? Did you know how it was done? Yes, I'm not going to go back nobody. and forth. But you didn't tell nobody about it. No, I did not. But yeah, you're and doing I, it. Now. No, I am not. I do it. I, I'm right now. My acceptance rate is under fifty. No, I am not. I am currently not doing it. I am currently doing something else. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you fucking talking about the shit. When, you know, you shouldn't be talking about it. Whatever, bro. You, you know what, Cherry? Do, do what you want to do, bro. You want to you wanna re-put it up? It's all good, bro. I don't care. No, I'm not re-putting it up. But what I'm trying to explain to you, Flex, is... So when they talk about putting it up, that's the video that he took down that I think uh, first out of this. But... But obviously, Cherry decided that he wasn't going to let that die. Um, I got this tip from from three or four different gig tubers that I know that all of this uh, chaos was was going on, um, and and kind of tuned into it last night. I I have regularly watched these folks for the last few years, so I know a lot of them very very well in terms of of what their message is and how they go about uh, about doing their gig to broadcasting um let's keep going i understand you're mad i understand your point of view you have a right to be mad so what what can i do other than say i took it down and that's the end of it you're basically telling me that whatever you told me you already knew so shut the fuck up about it and don't fucking tell me nothing else because i already knew about it that's what you're telling me yeah that's what you basically tell me. I've known about it since September in hundreds of steps how it's done. Dozens of people, yes. Dozens of people on YouTube Flex, have known about it. Cherry, but hold on. But you didn't you didn't say nothing to me. That you, hey, hold on, Flex, I already knew about it. You know, this is how it's done. You, you never you never told me that. All right. So so I think we've kind of used up the uh 
kind of kind of used up the uh the the benefit of this particular video uh but you can see it's called the gig connection episode six from from always cherry uh if you want to see more of that uh so here's uh here's my analogy to the uh to the gig economy <laughs> So, see, that's 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 my analogy to the gig economy. It said the unprotect the un, uh, excuse me, the unprosecuted crimes and governmentally allowed fraud of DoorDash last mile delivery tasks evokes an insane game of mad bull driven chaos in which the exploited corporate AI run anonymous labor is app slaves. Dashers are clowns in the deadly predatory capitalist rodeo. So uh, that's that's my description of uh, of what's happening with the gig economy, and and I think they are like these rodeo clowns. Uh, everybody's sitting in the audience, and dashers are just getting tossed around willy nilly in the air, uh, and uh, there's no there's no consideration for their safety or their well-being or anything else and and there never will be they're they're rodeo clowns they're meant to be uh put in this position so uh another broadcaster that uh has been around for a long time is called dashing trader and i'm just gonna uh show a moment of his uh information because he is uh he is jumping on, I would say, the very good bandwagon of telling the truth. Today, we're going to be taking a deep dive into the wonderful world of food delivery apps. In specific, we're going to talk about DoorDash. With these apps, we have, you know, incredible convenience when it comes to getting this food, you know, working the apps, making a little extra money. But there's a dark side to all this, and we're going to talk about it today. In this video, we're going to be shedding light on the ugly truth about DoorDash, revealing some of the controversial practices drivers and restaurants have been facing. So without further ado, let's get right into it. But look, before we do that, hit that like and the subscribe button for your boy. DoorDash all right. So I, I did hit the like and, and subscribe button for our boy. For our boy. Um, I wanted you to show that and and give Dash and Trader some credit because you did a good video there, and I would suggest you you watch that video. Uh, he goes through from from a driver's protect perspective a number of the scams that he knows about. Um, this is a trend, right? This guy, this is this is a guy that's been doing this for a long time. A number of the others have been doing this for a long time, and and the gig tube creators are starting to come out and say. This is fraud. This is a scam. This is how it works. This is what's happening with customers. This is how the system is going. And the big problem is that shit draws flies, right? The, a scam industry can draw nothing but scams from every aspect of its marketplace, whether that's scammers from restaurants doing doing scam kitchens or spam kitchens and ghost kitchens, whether it's consumers stealing food, whether it's uh, whether it's dashers uh, acting wonderfully or badly, everybody is hurt by this system that has been created uh, with data to be used against humans instead of for humans. So so the gig economy is is corporate AI created to be used against humanity to exploit humanity so i'm going to wrap that up here i want to thank everybody for for tuning in tonight and i hope that this kind of gives you some flavor of how corrupt every single part of this this activity is even the parts that look wholesome or 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 human to the naked eye don't really happen that way at all. I shared the Who song. Uh, it all looks fine to the naked eye, 
but it don't really happen that way at all. And that's, that's absolutely the truth for the gig economy. The gig economy is a lie. It's just the economy. And the gig economy is a way for DoorDash and the other perpetrators of the corporate gig economy cabal around the country are fleecing this planet and, and destroying the social structure, the economic structure and the labor structure of, of every single nation that they're in. It's, it's horrifying. And you're seeing that right here in the actions of individuals that realize there's only one way to play this game and it's to cheat because it's it's rigged against you right that this is this is like playing a slot machine it's going to pay out at a certain rate and that's a lesser rate than you're paying in that's that's the way it works the only rule is there are no rules except you lose you always lose so this has been uh, the full dash closure audiobook and podcast and I want to thank you all for tuning in. Look forward to any comments and questions that you have. My name is Jeff Thomas Black. Good night.